What's up, everybody? It's Raj here from We All Playcast, and today we're doing a really cool build. Today we're going to be looking at our vertical cart water elevators. So we can go any direction, as well, we can go all the way up, all the way down, as much as we want. It works with all types of mine carts, so it saves us a ton of rails. We don't have to do anything crazy with it, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, I have to say. So the way that it works is it's using the bubble elevator that we normally would get uh, with, you know, player movements, item movements, the stuff that was added in 113. But the way we have this working is we have a sticky piston up top that pushes it. That gets triggered by just a little bit of redstoning with a trip, uh, with a trip wire right here. And then right on the other side, very, very simple. We just simply drop the cart right back down. So that brings us all the way up, pushes the cart out, moves it around, drops it back down. This is perfect for anything that you want to do with uh, maybe a, a mine cart to move items from down in your mine all the way up to maybe some furnaces to get them processed. Or it also works with entities such as a villager. Pretty simple, but pretty cool. Saves a ton of time and a lot of space too. So let's get started on how to build this crazy apparatus. The items that you will need are soul sand, some packed ice, rails, powered variety, and regular variety, a water bucket, some kelp to make them water source blocks, spruce sign, observer, sticky piston, some string, trip wire hook, some redstone torches to power the rails, redstone repeater and some redstone blocks and of course your building blocks of choice so we're going to grab all that and i'll show you how to put all this together so we're going to take our little area say it's down in the mine and uh, we're just going to get started with our glass blocks here so we'll get uh, a little bit of an area of where our up space is going to be and we'll start building out just a little bit of space here so we can have our entrance point ready to go. All right, so the way we want to do this is we want to place down a sign directly in front of where the water source block is going to be. It doesn't have to have anything there. And then right in front of that, we want to place our packed ice. And that's what's going to move the cart into that space. Now, for the sake of building, we're going to go ahead and place a just a regular block there for now. We will replace that with our, we will replace that with our soul sand so we can get that up and running. We'll replace this glass, and let's build our tower. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. It doesn't have to go... And it can go any direction vertically. It can go up all the way to build height, all the way down from the bedrock portion, however tall you want to make this, however far you need to move. Now, when you get to the top, there needs to be an area here where the tripwire hook is going to be uh, where it gets triggered. This block right here is the one that's going to push it, so we need to move up one block above that is where the tripwire hook will be. Now, on one side here, we need to have a block that will transfer redstone. The other side doesn't need to have that because it only needs to trigger from one of the sides. So in this case, we're going to use a stone block here, and then we'll put our tripwires down at this point, bang and bang. Then we use our string to set our tripwire hook like so. Done. All right, now for this point, we're going to put our water down here. And we're going to make these all in the source blocks by utilizing our kelp mechanic. So we're going to place down kelp, which can be placed on any block. And we just go all the way to the top of the water stream. Now we need to replace all that kelp with our soul sand. So we can now get a vertical water elevator happening here. And if you notice, if I go in here now, it will launch me all the way to the top. Puts a whole bunch of kelp in my inventory, but that's okay. Next up is we need to wire up the redstone to push this block with a sticky piston. So we place two blocks here, place our sticky piston in this orientation, and go ahead and break that block there. And then we're gonna wire up the redstone that goes around this point here. Now, for this point here, we need to put down our repeater and we're gonna set this repeater to two. So there we go. We click it twice, it goes to the second repeater there, the second configurational point. We place a bit of redstone down there, an observer facing this way, into a block that's going to transfer redstone into the sticky piston, like so. And what will happen now is on a firing of this tripwire, it'll push the block out, and then on release, it will pull the block back out. Then what we need to do is make a little bit of a trap so we have a place for the minecart to go. So we're going to place all of these blocks down here. We're going to place them out of the glass, but they really can be built out of any block that you'd like. Uh, in the sake of entities like villagers that we have moving over there, 
that would have to be glass. Otherwise, you'll start suffocating your villagers, and we really, really don't want that. All right, so we have this point here, that we're going to loop it all the way around. And this is where, like, at the very top, you would do all of your operations, your mining points, uh, your furnaces, anything like that. That's where all of this would go. Then right at this point is where we're going to be adding some powered rails to go around from this side here. And we'll just go ahead and make that real quick. And then we're going to make our drop chute. So our drop chute is basically the same thing that we did before on the other side, but it's just going to be a vertical shaft that drops all the way down to your return point. I'll just do this for now, and then I'll show you how to prime up the rails down below. Building up our little tower. And one of the things that's really cool about this is you can build this as tall as you like, as low as you like. It can go as, as many blocks as you need it to go, as long as you're within build height limits. All right, let's go ahead and place a, one more powered rail there. Let's go ahead and place our blocks here. Some regular rails down on this point. And let's go ahead and power them up with our redstone torches. Easy. All right, there we go. And what that will do is that will drop the cart back down into here. Now let's break out a few of these blocks. And we need to place down one glass block right there and then break out this block right there. And the reason that we're doing that is so we can get this nice angled rail for the return portion of it. Now what we do is we break that out because now that it's angled, you can replace that and it will remain angled the entire time. Now from this point, we're going to just loop all this around with some powered rail. And the powered rail that goes directly into that block there. Now we can also take this sign out because we don't need it. It only needs to be one block high. So that will push the cart into the water stream. Bang, bang, we'll complete the loop, power up our redstone signal, and our build is done. That's it. That's all you need to do to move this entire thing up a vertical shaft. So let's take a look at it. Let's grab ourselves a mine cart with a with the uh, hopper in it, and let's go to push. Let's see what happens. There it goes. And then it pushes the mine cart out, drops it back down the shaft, drops it to that point, and loops back around. Easy farm, but the possibilities are kind of crazy if you think about the implementations that you can go into with this vertical water elevator with minecart. I thought it was a pretty cool idea. We kind of stumbled upon this a little bit. So I think it'd be really neat to see where you guys all go with it. The next portion is, that is really interesting. Interesting. Things that only happen in Minecraft. So I made this an ocean biome, so apparently dolphins could spawn in here. Uh, that would be kind of a problem. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, oh do do the oh don't look away look away guys just look away it's not it's not gonna be pretty. Don't look. Oh flipper! All right, we kind of broke it a little bit here. So we just need to re-trigger that somehow by doing that, I think. That is interesting. So maybe an ocean biome would be kind of a problem with this, huh? Interesting. All right, we'll get this one started back up. There's also some new chunk loading issues within 114 or 115 that becomes a little bit of a problem. We broke our farm. Oh, we didn't put the redstone back up. Silly me. Here we go. It helps if you actually, like, run the redstone signal through. There's also a small issue that squids will spawn. Uh, they tend not to be an issue, though, uh, because currently the villager can breathe in there, and they will eventually kind of move out of the way. And then the they should make it up and through. There you go. And they will eventually die. So you actually kind of will get a few ink sacks as well in this farm. But in a normal world... Because this is the only space for anything to spawn, we're getting the maximum amount of spawns of passive mobs. And that's why we're getting that. And you can just see the villager went right past that one that time. But in a normal world, that is going to be a very, very rare thing that would occur. Simply because there's more things that are spawned around. There are cows, there are sheep, there are pigs, there are all kinds of stuff all over the world. So guys, if you did enjoy this video, if you're going to be utilizing the vertical cart elevators for your entities of moving stuff out of your mind, moving villagers around, all the really cool things that you can do with it, make sure to give this video a like. And also check us out on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash weallplaycast. And remember, as always, to subscribe. 
We'll see you next time. Thank you.